Welcome to Average Joe's Gaming Podcast with your host, Joe. Tonight's episode, The One Without Tom. Hi, I'm Joe. And today, we'll talk about the acquisitions, the games I played last week, and I will also answer a few emails. So the first thing, I picked up the awesome Marvel Splendor. Very cool. I'm looking forward to getting this one on the table today. I'm a big fan of Splendor, and I'm a huge fan of Marvel. So on the cover of the box, you got Thanos. It looks like you're going to be going ahead and getting some of those Infinity Stones. So I will let you know, obviously, the next time I talk to you guys, what I thought about that. But for now, Marvel Splendor. Uh, I also picked up Nutty Noodles. Now, this one was interesting to me. So I went to Dragon's Den, my local game store, and I was picking up Marvel Splendor. So right next to the register, he had this display case of games under $20. And this one really looked interesting to me. So I love different type of boxes that are not your traditional box. I hate the storage solution for those boxes, but they become more of display pieces to me. So this one here, Nutty Noodles, comes in like kind of like a uh, a Chinese to-go box, and it's it's a dice game. I don't know much about it other than it looked fun. Uh, it's ages six and up, so I'm sure I can get Kathleen to play. Uh, plays in 15 minutes, and it's for two to four players. So on the side, it says the grumbling bellies and drooling mouths of the monsters waiting impatiently to dine are clear warning that you don't have much time. You need to get those noodles onto those tables, but be careful. The monsters have allergies. So, must be some kind of dice set collection. I'm not sure, but again, uh, hopefully I'll get that one to the table today, and I'll let you know the next time I talk to you. So, the other one I picked up was Truffle Shuffle. Uh, This is by AG Games, and it looks like Flat Out Games. So this one here is uh, Truffle Shuffle is a fast and fun card drafting game for the whole family. Players take turns selecting truffles from a shared box of overlapping cards in order to make their own arrangements of chocolates to sell. Okay, I've played games similar to this. Uh, the last one I played, I think it was Chocolate, and it was uh, you, you were essentially making your box of chocolates, but you were you're placing tiles. Now this is a card game, so. Um, I'm curious how this one plays out. So, hopefully I can get that one at the table as well today. Uh, The other one I picked up, uh, so my 13-year-old daughter, Cassie, really likes fairies. And so, whenever I find a fairy game, I try to pick it up because Kathleen also likes fairies. So, this one here is a two-player game uh, by Yui Rosenberg. And it's by Paper Plane Games. It's called Fairy Trails. And... You guys know, I love tile-laying games. And this is a tile-laying game. So, uh, on the back of this, this says says, Elves and Gnomes. Now, I love gnomes. So, here, I'm already already into this one. Uh, Elves and Gnomes are building paths in the Enchanted Forest. Help your side win, but don't get lost in the forest. It looks like you've got some uh, cool gems to place... Uh, so they're called houses, place houses on the completed paths, but they look like little gemstones. Um, and then you play cards to extend your network and cut off your opponent. They they might be cards, but on the back here, it looks like they're tiles. So maybe they're square cards. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, I also picked up a couple games from Walmart, and that was uh, the Funko uh, Games, not a not an actual Funko Pop, like the Funkoverse, but Funko Games put out a Back to the Future game, which is a uh, cooperative game. Um, Looks like you take on a role of one of the characters from the movie, and you work together or against Biff or whatever. But it looked fun. I'm a big fan of Back to the Future, so I ended up picking that one up. The other one I picked up was the Disney's Haunted House, or Haunted Mansion. And, uh... I just really enjoy the theme of that, and, uh, well, obviously, uh, my wife loves Disney, so maybe I can get that one to the table for our Halloween party. So, um, and then the last one I got was more of a party game, 
and it's for me and my wife. Uh, so we we absolutely love Friends. We we grew up watching it. Uh, just absolutely love the TV show. Um, so they came out with another game, which anytime they come out with a game, it's very gimmicky. It's very party type game. Um, like the, uh, the one that we have already is, uh, friends, the one with the ball. And it's just, you're supposed to do different stuff and toss the ball. It's, it's, uh, from the episode where they're just tossing a ball back and forth and they don't drop it for so many hours. Um, so this one, the new one is the apartment game. And, uh, in the apartment game is off of the show where they were competing for the big apartment and Ross made up this, uh, massive game, like a game show. And it was just trivia about each character or each person, Chandler and Joey and, and whatnot. And then the winner of the game got the big apartment. So, um, I, I really enjoy the show Friends, and so anytime they come out with a board game type game, it's it's in the hopes of, hey, maybe we'll have a Friends-themed game day, and uh, go from there. So that's that's my latest acquisitions. Um, quite a few, but uh, that's kind of what happens sometimes. I, I get a little overboard, and I, I get some games, and then some, some weeks I don't buy any. So... Um, that's 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 it for my acquisitions. So what I played last week was we we had a couple game days. Um, I met my neighbors, which was very cool. Uh, I got new neighbors that just moved in next to me, and they enjoy board games. So I th- thought that was pretty cool. Um, so they can come over and just hang out, and we can play some board games in in the game room. Uh, so what I what I played last week was I got my neighbor over and uh tom and uh a buddy of mine and we played a game of fences with uh the males expansion um so fences is a tile laying game where you are um you're placing a tile and you're trying to show possession with uh positioning a hen house in that tile but you cannot share a a fenced in area with another person Unless for some reason you placed it and then they connected later on down the game. But anyway, you'll you'll try to fence in your, your areas of your livestock. And if you have all of one type of animal, you're going to get two points per animal when you close that farm or that fenced area. Uh, and then if you don't, then uh, you'll, you'll get one point per animal. But then you'll also get points based off of your, your player card, which is your uh, special character. Um, so I, I usually typically play with Farmer Joe just because that's my character. Um, I really enjoy that game. Uh, we've talked about it a few times. Uh, there actually is a Kickstarter going on right now that uh, uh, is is for the newest expansion, Fences the Ranch. And that goes until, I believe, the first week of November. So if you're interested, check it out. I also have a video out there just talking a little bit about what you get in the expansion. Um, that's on YouTube. It's also on their Kickstarter page. Um, the uh, the other game that I played is Moonrakers, and that was a Kickstarter I got in last week. Uh, really, really enjoyed this. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I am a big fan of space games, and... Uh, I really enjoyed this. This is a deck building game and it's not cooperative. It is totally uh, competitive, but you can work out alliances and make deals and you can even make those deals to screw over your opponent. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's a very fun game for two players. We missed a couple things. Um, so I think it would have, I think it would have changed a little bit, uh, cause there is actually another deck, uh, that you play with as two players that makes a third person basically. And, uh, we, we re- I really enjoyed it. I believe Tom really enjoyed it as well. Um, it was a, it was a very fun game. Uh, the components were really nice. Uh, I got the Kickstarter edition and, uh, got some awesome metal coins, the spaceships, I was a little disappointed on. They're cool molds, but they're they're a very 
cheap, lightweight plastic. Um, I guess I would have personally preferred if they were maybe a solid resin or something, a little bit heavier. Just seems like everything in the game was just very heavy and very quality. And then you get these ships, and they were very, very lightweight. Um, it just didn't fit the rest of the game, in my opinion. Great game. Uh, absolutely loved it, but that was, if I had one downside, it was probably the ships. It just, they just didn't feel, they didn't feel heavy enough for me. Cool molds, each person, each color has their own play mat, and then they have their own ship, and the ships are all different molds, which I thought was really cool, uh, but it was just that, that fact that it wasn't like either, uh, um, I don't even know what you'd call it, like a hard rubber, uh, Firefly has awesome ships for the miniatures, and uh, this one has very cool molds, but just disappointing on the material that was made, especially after you get these awesome heavy metal coins. And uh, the cards are really nice with a linen finish. Uh, the box insert is just amazing. I mean, it's got a spot for everything. Um, it makes going, putting it away very easy. Uh, that's always very nice when you, when you have a, a well thought out uh, box insert. And if you guys are curious... It does hold the sleeved cards. So, there is that. Uh, then my neighbors came over on Sunday, and we played three games of 5211, Azul Edition. And uh, I think they really enjoyed that. Uh, 5211, if you haven't heard of me talk about it before, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very fun game. So, it is strictly just a card game, a, a trick-taking game game, I guess I, I would call it. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm not too incorrect on that. But either way, uh, it is a fun, fun card game. Um, what you're going to do is you have five cards. You're going to pick two, play two. Everyone plays two. You reveal those two cards. And then you're going to pick one, play one, pick one, play one. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to score the colors of the cards. Or, if you see someone's going to score a bunch of points, you're going to try to play some roosters. And depending on the player count, that's how many roosters have to be played to score the roosters. If the roosters score, roosters are worth zero. They just fill up your score pile. Uh, if you play under a certain amount of colors um, of the same color, then uh, you, you score that. If you play a number of cards in a certain color above a certain number based on player count, then you do not score. Uh, then it goes to the next one, and if there's a tie, then the tie, it goes to the next one that is not tied. And and there was a couple rounds where we played played our hands, and nobody scored anything because it was a tie, it was a tie, it was a tie, and then the one was, uh, it was above a certain number of in the color. So, uh, And then we played Noctiluca. Noctiluca is a, is a great game by Shem Phillips, uh, Z-Man Games. Beautiful, beautiful dice. This game lasts two rounds, and based on player count, there's 12 actions each round. And uh, so if you play in a four-player game, then each person gets three turns. And what you're doing is you're trying, to, you're trying to complete these little jars. So you have a jar with different color Noctiluca in the jar, and the dice are your Noctilucas. So you're going to place on the edge of the board, and you can go in one of two directions, and you're going to say a number, and then that number in that direction, you will take all of that die. So if you say fives, and there's four fives out there in different colors in that direction, you're going to take the four fives, and then you're going to fill them up as much as you can on your, your jar card. If you cannot use some of the dice. You're going to pass them in whatever orientation you're going. So in the first round, you go to the left. In the second round, you're going to go to your right. Um, so each player after that can take one die. And then they'll, they'll, they'll pass to the next player, and then that player can take one die, and so on and so forth, until either nobody can take a die, or all the dice are gone. So, and then, and then you want to complete your cards, and when you complete your card, there's a tag at the top of the jar, and you will grab one of the tokens that matches that color, and then they're worth points at the end of the game, too. And so, you'll have some points 
on your cards for if they're like a harder completion card, you will uh, you'll take those and you'll you'll score for those. You score the tokens at the end of the game, and they go in ascending order. So the tokens start out at small, like I think it's like uh, three points, and then the biggest point marker is seven points. At the end of the game, whoever has the most in the colors will take the rest of the stack. They'll flip them upside down, and they're worth one point, which can be huge. Uh, and then you'll also have a special Noctiluca color, and you'll score one point for each completed card that you have. Of uh, You'll score the Noctilucas on those cards. So if you have two Noctiluca on each one of your cards that you completed... Uh, In your chosen color, you'll score one point for each one of those. Uh, The other thing is, for your uncompleted cards at the end of the game, you'll score one point for each two dice on your uncompleted cards. So, I absolutely really, really enjoy this game. Um, I don't know why it doesn't hit the table more, but it is is a very fun game. Very quick, very easy to get the table, so uh, we taught them that one too. Um, So, the games that we played. Fences... Moonrakers, 5211, Azul, and Noctiluca. Um, so I will. I've already rated Fences, 5211, Noctiluca. So if, you, if you'd like to hear my rating on those, listen to an earlier episode. <laughs> um, season 2, obviously, is the better of the season. So as I've been doing this show, uh, the sound quality's gotten better. Uh, I believe I've gotten a little bit better. Some people might say otherwise. I apologize if if I'm not, but I enjoy enjoy doing the show. So that's that's pretty much the main reason why I do it. So obviously, if I can connect with some listeners, I absolutely love that. Um, you guys make it fun, especially with your emails. Uh, and if I don't have a co-host, then you know, I'm, I'm doing this myself today. I love having listeners on here. I love having your emails. If you want to record a question, I love having that. So, um, I'll go over the rating scale. Uh, so, a negative 10 is an island dice. That's a game that's just not a game. A 1 is going to be your uh, Joe Blow. And that is a game that you just despise. Uh, you don't want to play it, you don't want to own it, you don't like it. A number two is a Joe Mama. It's an okay game, not your favorite game, but you'll play it if someone asks, maybe. Uh, number three is your average Joe. It's a good game. It will hit the table whenever someone wants to play it. Uh, number four is a Smoking Joe. It's almost a knockout. It's a great game. A number five is a Joe Tacular. A Jotacular is one of your favorite games. And a number six is a Joe Almighty. A Joe Almighty is like the Holy Grail, the Excalibur of your game collection. With with me for Moonrakers right now, I'm definitely going for a Smoking Joe. The components wise, it was it was awesome. It was very, very well done. And obviously I have the Kickstarter edition, so I don't know what the retail version is. But I can't imagine it being much farther off than what I have. I mean, I, I know I have a different type of box. So I have a big, heavy gray box that has the, the gold foil lettering that says Moonrakers. I have the metal coins. But I imagine that most of the retail versions have something close to the component-wise. So other than the spaceships, for me, it was a smoking Joe. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. Okay, so the next thing we have is our giveaway for fences. Jeremy Skirdla won that one. So I will contact him and hopefully get that out here sometime soon. All right, so Jeremy Skirdla also sent an email in. Um, So he said that he got the Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies in the mail. Uh, I'm glad he got that. Uh, That was, uh, I I think that was a couple months ago that he won that. He really enjoyed our episode with fences. Uh, And he's a total sucker for farming games, having grown up on a farm and living the hobby farm now, and hope to check that one out soon. Well, guess what, Jeremy? You won, so it'll be heading your way. Um, So he included the uh, catchphrase of, you reap what you sow. 
Um, so he has a question for us. Do you have any game themes that relate so much to your real life that you feel like you have to check them out? Okay, so there are a couple that uh, that come to mind. Um, I don't have one of them. It is it is a garbage theme game. So <laughs> this might turn people off, but I run a garbage company for my my main job. That's what pays for my hobby. That's what pays for me doing podcasting. Um, that's, it pays for my family's lifestyle. That's, that's what pays the bills. So I manage a garbage company. I go out on route. I do routes. I pick up garbage. I pick up recycling. I pick up yard waste. It's what I do. I've been doing this for 15 years and I know the ins and outs of the garbage business. So Whenever I see a, a game surrounding the garbage companies, I tend to check them out. Uh, there is one that I saw in Miniature Market. Um, it was kind of a higher price game. It, I think it was like 60 bucks or something like that. And it just, the artwork was not that appealing to me. So I, it's in my wish list. But it's one that I probably won't jump on until it hits like the twenty or thirty dollar. So I don't know much about it. Uh, it was something sanitation industry or something like that. Uh, I do have one that I kickstarted a couple years ago, and uh, it's called Trash Wars, and that's just you're you're at the landfill, you're finding things to to build and attack each other with. Uh, I have not gotten that one to the table yet, but in my head, I keep thinking of like Euro games and I've got a few that, that I work on periodically. Mostly they just, they're, they're figments in my head uh, of, you have different garbage companies and uh, you're trying to get a customer base but you also pick up garbage for revenue and then you have to take your recycling and try to get rid of it. And just, they're different themes. Um, probably not the most appealing theme for your normal everyday person, but for anybody that's in the garbage industry, it might be something right up their alley. Um, but that's, that's my <laughs> that's my thing. Um, Tom being in the financial industry, I don't know what he would uh, what he'd go with, but maybe we'll hear back from him uh, in the next week or so. Um, other than that, so we'll go to a question from Robert. So Robert's question this week is: What are some of your favorite board game memory stories? Uh, games or situations that have stuck in your minds and always bring a smile to your face. Um, that's that is a tough question because I genuinely enjoy gaming and just the hobby. I I've gotten to meet so many cool people over the years, uh, a lot of friends. I, I actually I grew up with one friend. And I still talk to him to this day, not as much as I, I would hope to, but you know, we, we all have their own lives and, and we kind of drifted apart, but growing up, I only had one friend. And so I think the coolest thing for me is just the simple fact that I get to meet so many interesting and cool people and, and I've gotten so many friends over the years that, that this this hobby is it, it just makes it for me it's that's that's the thing is meeting people just just normal people uh i got to meet town vassal now i think he's a massive celebrity he does not share that opinion um but still a normal person and i got to sit down at geekway and play uh western legends with him and his buddy was one of the designers on the game and so he came in as a special guest and played games all day. And then afterwards, he played games. I did not get to play anything other than Western Legends with him. But even that was very cool. And then I got to chat with him. Um, 
I got to meet Stephen Bonacore a couple times. That was very cool. I really enjoyed that. Uh, very down to earth person. Obviously, he's always got his A game going. I mean he he knows how to be a personality for board gaming. He knows how to market, and so he's he never lets his guard down on that. I think, in my opinion, um, whereas I I'm not a celebrity at all. I mean I I'm not a board game personality. Someday I hope. You know, I, I guess I am a couple board games, but I hope someday that, you know, it would be cool if I ever went to a convention and someone walked up to me and wanted to play a game with me because they knew who I was. I think that'd be cool. Not to mention, not to say that just because someone comes up and wants to play a game, that's not cool, but there is that portion where if you're doing something like this, like I, I, I've been doing this for two years, uh, Later this October, we'll be starting our third season. Um, so this is this is something that I really enjoy doing, and I just I it's an outlet for me to meet more people and not have a huge head about it, but just it would be kind of cool to be a board game personality and just someone that someone recognizes, like, hey, you're the average Joe. I mean, that would be the coolest thing. I had that happen to me at uh, a convention earlier this year and it it wasn't um like he didn't recognize who I was or anything but what happened was we were playing a game and he had also kickstarted this game and him and his wife walked by and they were asking us about it and I just played the average joasaurus and he's like oh yeah yeah that that's a fun little card and I said well <laughs> yeah um, I was wearing my average Joe shirt and my wife says, well, yeah, cause he's the average Joe. And he's, he looks at me and he says, Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. That's, you're the guy that's in the game. That's very cool. Like, you know, that's, he didn't know that I had a podcast. He didn't know I had a show or anything like that. So he just knew of this card and then getting, getting to put, okay, you're the guy that's responsible for the card. He thought that was cool. That, that was cool for me, but it would be, I think it'd be a lot cooler if, if I ever went to a convention and they were like, Hey, you are the average Joe. So that's, that's my dream. Um, I know I kind of got off the, the, the memories and whatnot. Um, I would say even if it's a bad game for me, it's still a memory that I'm glad I have. Uh, like I talk, I talk about twilight Imperium. Uh, every once in a while, you know, the the only good expansion for that is uh, is five gallons of gasoline. Um, true, I wholeheartedly believe that. Uh, even though there, it is not a bad game. It's just uh, the experience for that was horrible. But I'm glad I had that because it it does it gives me something to laugh about and it gives me something to kind of reminisce. Like I had such a bad experience with it. It has become just this this running joke. Um, uh, just like, I, I don't like it, uh, ricochet robots. And, and that wasn't really a bad experience. It was just, it was not a fun experience. I, things like that. I don't really think about ricochet robots very much, but it's, it's things like twilight Imperium that stick with me. Um, getting to play some of these other games. Like I, I like campaign games. Uh, one of my favorite ones is, uh, shadows of brimstone, wouldn't mind getting that back to the table because I had a lot of fun and a lot of memories of playing with that. And then you have a character and you're building upon this character and you just have the storyline. And I, I really enjoy that. And and like I've talked many times before, I love games with theme. And theme is just so huge for me whenever I play anything that that's the first thing I, I gravitate towards. You know, like Moonrakers. The whole reason why I backed this game was because of the theme. I love space games. So, I mean, there, <laughs> there's really not much that I don't enjoy. That's, And that's unfortunate part of the reason why my, my board game collection grows so much is because I'm not really picky when it comes to games. I, I like to try anything and everything that comes to the table because I don't know what I'm going to enjoy. So... I buy games, I play games, and well, as soon as I can, I can make it happen. I will, I'll send some pictures or put them on our Facebook page of the uh, the game room 
the updates, and uh, and the game library. So Tom was giving me a little grief last week about how uh, it's not a library. Well, it is a library. It's it's my game library. So I took part of my garage and I put up some shelving, and so that's my overflow now. And then we've also got obviously the giveaway cabinet uh, that I've got multiple games in there, um, which. Uh, we will go ahead and do another giveaway of fences. So if you missed out on uh, last giveaway for fences, here's another option. Because I, I do really enjoy this game. I bought quite a few copies uh, last year, or well, it was this year, um, just uh, to buy some games that uh, to give away. So I, I bought a case of those from Adam down in St. Louis. Uh, so I, I still have, I think, three copies or so to give away. So we're going to give another one away this week, uh, or this we'll have a, a giveaway this week for fences. And, uh, so, uh, phrase is harvest season. You'll get to enter in. All you have to do is send an email to Joe at, uh, average Joe's gaming podcast at outlook.com and put the word harvest season in there and you can put a question in there. If you want to record a question and attach the file, you can be on the podcast as well. Uh, absolutely love having our listeners on here. I love the emails. Uh, keep them coming, you guys, uh, and gals. Um, it's getting closer to Halloween season. So I would love to see some pictures of some spooky game rooms, um, or your coolest costume. I, I, I'm planning on going to a roll and treat as a dice demon. So I'm decorating up the charger. I've got some really cool, big, uh, stuffed, uh, D twenties and we're going to put some red lighting in the trunk and I'm going to give out some average Joe stuff. So if you're in the neighborhood, uh, 49th and Western in the parking lot of Nerdvana at, I believe it's from two to four was the last update that I heard. Uh, I'll keep you posted on that. So, until next time, I'm Joe.